make sure that the scores are correct. This is so much work doing this alone. Why does anybody want to solo cast? Are people crazy? <laughs> but alright, ladies and gentlemen, spawning so here in the top right corner of the map. Spawning Red playing Zerg, playing for FXO. Oh, it is Mr. Sir Robin. And you can find him on Twitter at FXO Sir Robin. Meanwhile, his opponent, named after a courageous Starship Troopers character, and rightly so, especially after that first game, Spawning Pink. Give it up! It's Johnny Rico. And of course, there's his Twitter handle as well. So again, guys, I do encourage you, please, give these guys some love. Seriously, like, after this series is done, I don't care if Johnny Rico wins or loses. I don't care if Sir Robin wins or loses. They put on a show for you here today. They put on a show for me to talk about here today. I know I'll be thanking them. I think you guys should, too. Nothing like cooking sausage at 6.30 a.m., says Jazzbot. Man, that is sounding so good to me right now. But all right, Johnny Rico and... And Mr. Sir Robin, again, clash of two, well, I, I guess you can't really call them titans. They're whatever between man and titan would be, though, so like, I guess demigod doesn't, I'm not sure where that falls on the scale, but let's just say these are two damn good players, all right? Does that sound good? Does that sound fair? You know what, if it doesn't, forget it, go away. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I feel Sir Robin made the right moves, especially towards the end. The biggest thing I just can't get over, though, is is Johnny Rico being so late with the third, without the economy, and without that Spire, so Robin could have capitalized on it. And I feel if he went back to watch that replay, he would absolutely be kicking himself in the butt, realizing there were so many points where he could have gone in with that swell of Zerglings he had, and just, maybe not demolish or end the game, but cause enough damage to cause Johnny Rico to be so far behind that there'd be no recovery from it. Sorry, just type in the chat here, give it some love for some like compliments, because I'm not good at taking them. Again, for anyone watching this, I do apologize if you are inverted by the cast. This is the WCS EU qualifiers. So this is Rifkin for Base Trade TV solo casting for what is, again, a very rare occasion. Not something I too often do, as I do prefer dual casting. But uh, yeah, so Robin, I gotta say, Johnny Rico does this every game I've ever seen him play. He puts a spawning pole right next to the extractor, which I find quite interesting, because in a lot of ZVZ matches, I've actually seen players on purpose position the spawning pool one grid mark away from the hatchery. This allows you to nestle the queen in between it and severely limit the surface area in which zerglings can connect while allowing you to keep your injects quite, I guess, pristine as it were. As uh, yeah, so Robin's actually created that gap I was talking about. So it, you can just nestle your queen in here and instead of zerglings getting a full surround when they come to attack, uh, they're, you're really only going to have to deal two or three at a time. And while the queen will absolutely still die, it will prevent it from dying for very long. But this is a map, this is another map where I feel creep spread is so important, and if not creep spread, at least the overlord spread, because this map has two giant hallways, one to the north, of course, and one to the south. This is just a giant O-ring. Uh, there's no watchtowers to take advantage of, but in the, the trade-off is there's also not a lot of paths you can get caught off guard in, as they all filtered into this sort of choke area that goes between your third, your natural, and your main. So a lot of the times, this is all you need, like, put your defenses out here, have your army postured out here, as uh, you'll quickly respond anywhere else. The only real vulnerable spot in this entire map, I feel, isn't even these corner bases. I feel these are actually better guarded than this third base location, just because there's two ways to come in. But Banley and this coming out of both these players again, looking to play a little bit defensive, a little bit aggressive. We'll have to wait and see. And Johnny Rico, again, without the uh, micro that a Protoss player, I think, would have. It's kind of funny. I, I, I find there's a lot of different aspects to each race at what they excel at that should be translated to the others. And it's the top-notch players that you see at, uh, sort of incorporate each of them. You know, Zerg could really adapt, sorry, consume the essence of the Protoss in the effect that they could, you know, SimCity a bit better. Uh, they could also adapt from the Terran where, like, you know, we saw, or I guess you guys didn't see, I'll have it on YouTube later, but Slavic go for some crazy Overlord drops with Ultra Z Zerglings causing tons of damage at a main base location. So, it's kind of funny how, you know, while you're playing Zerg in this very Zerg standard way to play, there's definitely, definitely room to improve for everybody, and you can adapt it from just the basic playstyles of other races. Johnny Rico again going for this Roach War. Now this says to me that he's really looking to play this safe than sorry. He doesn't want to be caught off guard without Roaches. But as we saw last game, he didn't really dedicate too much to them. Yes, they ate some gas and quite frankly a lot, in my eyes, too many minerals for the effectiveness that they carried throughout the last game. But you got to keep in mind, he got in there to the third. He picked off not only the Queen, but a couple drones. But yeah, in the end, ultimately, they were just kind of squashed by the Mutalisks. 
Uh, Curiosity in me says both players a little bit even on gas. So Robin just ever so slightly going to be ahead, but their layer already starting. But he has in the you know despite having the gas earlier invested a hundred into this armor upgrade. So that's one less mutalisk on the field. And as silly as it is, one less mutalisk can make the difference in a fight. Now, looking at this, we got a lot of roaches, so Johnny Rico, forget what I was just talking about, folks. By not going for layer first, he's just going to go straight aggressive with these roaches. And wow, that certainly went flying! I love the ragdoll physics mechanics in Heart of the Swarm. That is one aspect of this game I will absolutely never get bored of. But Roach is coming across the field. I love this too. He chased the Overlord off. Guys, this was on purpose. This wasn't a Queen auto attacking out of boredom. He chased the Overlord off so that Sir Robin would have no idea this was coming. And quite frankly, he won't until it's too late, I fear. Johnny Rico following this up with a ton of Zergling aggression. Lots of Banelings coming in. Johnny Rico is going to get scouted, but the Roaches will keep the Banelings alive. And Sir Robin... Uh, I'm just trying to think like that Monty Python song. Like, brave, brave Sir Robin tucked his hands and like turned away or something but why is my mouse not doing there we go sorry mouse freaking out making me angry Johnny Rico looking to end this game really quick so many roaches so many banelings everything's filtering through but these banelings gonna connect to Johnny Rico's roaches don't actually do that much damage and look at the main base what is here but a ton of banelings coming out of Johnny Rico connected to so many of these drones what is happening right now as corpses go flying left and right surrounded with a beautiful spread trying to limit the damage coming next but Johnny Rico with too many roaches Ladies and gentlemen, a very quick non mutalist GG coming out of Sir Robin as Johnny Rico takes game two and does advance in the WCS qualifiers.